plenty of money in this world. There's plenty of money in this country. It's just in the wrong hands. And I will be damned if the same politicians who refuse to act then are going to try to come back today and say we need a middle of the road approach to save our lives. That is too much. Give us some of that socialism that the oil and gas industry has had for a century. Freedom is back in style. Welcome to the revolution. Yeah, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Sean Hannity. The new, the new Sean Hannity Show. More behind-the-scenes information on breaking news. And more bold, inspired solutions for America. As they say in my business, I'm going to... I'm going to give you the whole load today. We got the first sort of mainstream African American yeah. who is articulate and bright and, and, and clean and nice looking guy. I mean, it's, that's a storybook. You're telling me we got to go spend money to keep from going bankrupt? Yes, yes, you don't know my state. My state was a slave state. My state is a border state. My state is the eighth largest black population in the country. My state is anything from a northeast liberal state. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. So fully, I'm not joking. His mom uh, lived in, uh, in Long Island for 10 years or so. Uh, God rest her soul. And uh, um, although she's, wait, your mom's still... Your mom's still alive as your dad passed. God bless her soul. A man who will be the next president of the United States, Barack America. Hillary Clinton is as qualified or more qualified than I am to be vice president of the United States of America. Let's get that straight. And quite frankly, um, it might have been a better pick than me. So let me say it again. Thank you, uh, Terry. And thank you, uh, Dr. Pepper, and thank you, Chancellor, or Dr. Paper. Romney wants to let the, he said in the first hundred days, he's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. Think about what happened out in where Gabby Gifford, my good friend, was shot and mortally wounded. Well, I say they're going to start to see unemployment grow uh, this spring. You mean employment? Uh, it's going to take... Uh, employment girl, I'm sorry. Number one job facing the middle class, and it happens to be, as Barack says, a three letter word jobs. J O B S, jobs. See, I went to the big guys for the money. I was ready to prostitute myself in the, ma the manner in which I talk about it. Chuck Graham, state senator's here. Chuck, stand up, Chuck, let him see you. Oh, God love you. What am I talking about? I tell you what, you're making everybody else stand up, though, pal. You know, if Donald Trump said any of this crazy stuff that you hear out of creepy, crazy, well, lazy Uncle Joe, uh, you just can you imagine, man, for the first time ever, you have a mainstream African-American who is articulate and bright and clean. I'm like, yeah, good. Donald Trump ever says that. God help us. And then, of course, everyone forgets it was Joe Biden. Well, he didn't. He wanted to keep segregated schools. Joe Biden. Oh, and Anita Hill. Oh, let me go on another apology tour. But I don't even think that's what's going to define the 2020 election. All of this Russia stuff happened on their watch. They all were warned. They let it happen. And Devin Nunes was warning them in 2014. Then you got the crappy economy, which I've been talking about today, that they left us. And you know what? We're going to go over a study that's out there today. Those people that were most negatively impacted by the Biden-Obama years and their horrible economic plan, 13 million more Americans, food stamps, 8 million more poverty, uh, and the worst recovery since the 40s. You got to remember, we now have millions of Americans off of food stamps, uh, out of poverty, getting career jobs built. We're at near full employment with 3.6 being the number of unemployed, uh, the lowest it's been in decades, like every other low, record low unemployment, African-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, Asian-Americans, women in the workplace, youth unemployment. You know, they, they've got to run on this record. And I don't, Joe, Joe Biden, everyone says, well, he's the favorite right now. Uh, I'd like to hear him defend it because I don't think he can. And then how does he deal with the fringe lunatics that want to get rid of 
oil, gas, cars, combustion engine, and, oh, cows and planes. And everything else is free. Anyway, joining us, former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. Gingrich is uh, now best-selling book. It's called Collusion, ripped from today's headlines, a novel that he co-wrote with Peter Early. Uh, how are you, my friend? Good to have you back. I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, let me ask you this. So I've talked to you a lot about the deep state. We we talked yeah. about Russia. We now everything that happened was under Obama's watch. It seems now we're in the office of the attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch, uh, Biden and Obama. We know there were Oval Office meetings about it. Then the economy, then foreign policy. Well, how do they win when we compare and contrast the records of Trump to the record of Obama and Biden? Well, let me say, first of all, I do hope that both uh, Senator Lindsey Graham and Attorney General Barr are going to follow the lines you're outlining. And I hope that over the next year we're going to learn a great deal more about how really sick the system was, how close we were to a coup d'etat, uh, and how far they went uh, to protect Hillary Clinton, who was clearly engaged in, in behaviors that were felonies. But having said that, uh, I think the challenge that you and I face, and I say this from uh, being out here, I'm talking to you from, from Los Angeles today and talking to people all over Southern California, we represent the party that thinks that facts matter. They represent a party of pure emotion. And so their, their hope is that they can somehow, you know, cry at the right moment and illustrate the passion and depth of their sincerity so that we will then overlook the fact that they're crazy. Uh, and I think that that's, that that's the heart of their appeal. It's not a fact. And I think that's why we sometimes have debates where, where you have two totally different languages. We use the language of fact. Uh, they use the language of emotion. Uh, because it's all emotion and facts don't matter, they can lie enthusiastically. Uh, so you, you hear, I mean, some of the things Biden has said, for example, are, are so disgusting and so destructive. And he, but he says them while saying, you know, we need to really come together. And then he says three or four really divisive things in a row as part of his idea of how we come together. You look at the nutty positions that all of these candidates are taking, right? Um, a lot of it is, and I think you're right, emotionally, people can be sold. Well, if you're going to take care of my child's uh, uh, daycare and you're going to send my kid to nursery school and we're going to have kindergarten through the end of college and I'm going to get a, a guaranteed job, I'm going to get a guaranteed vacation from the government, guaranteed healthy food from the government. And, you know, I, I mean, whether I'm willing or unwilling to work, Every person has the natural stress in their lives of prov providing and working and producing. It, it, to me, you're literally ripping the guts out of somebody's somebody's natural talents that will never come to fruition because they won't feel the stress and pressure that it makes us great. It makes us Look, dig I, in I, deep. But I think part of the problem we have, and you and I have known each other for many, many years, and we've both been deeply concerned about this, Conservatives don't have the guts to be as emotionally intense as liberals. I mean, I'm in, I'm going to start giving you an example. I'm going to stay right now. I'm in Los Angeles. Sixty thousand people are, are on the streets. Now that should be totally unacceptable, and yet that's what the giant government of California has produced. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's hometown. I did research over the weekend, and it helps explain how nutty Pelosi is. You realize in in San Francisco, <clears throat> if you walk your dog without a pooper scooper is a $320 fine. But if you defecate on the street, it's okay. So if you're walking your dog and you forget your pooper scooper and the police walk up and you're next to a, a bunch of poop, you're supposed to say, oh, I did it. It's not my dog. I did it. And suddenly that's okay. This explains half of the insanity of this party. Mr. Speaker, uh, I sent my cameras twice to Pelosi's district. Literally outside her walled in gated community of really wealthy Silicon Valley folks and, and she's worth tens and tens of millions of dollars. One mile, less than a mile from there. And on the other side of town, less than a mile from her office, we have shown needles everywhere. We have shown human feces all over the streets. We, we the conditions are squalor. And I said, well, I know liberals are only generous with other people's money, but can't she say, I'm going to give a million, knock on the door of every neighbor. Can you give me a million? These people are loaded. And why don't we build right. a homeless shelter that provides counseling, you know, 
a few hot meals and a shower for people. Let's start with that. Okay, but, but, well, but I also think we ought to say to people, you know, just understand <clears throat> the Pelosi Democrats want to do for you what they've done for the poor in San Francisco. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> think- That's a great point. Or Los Angeles. How, why are all of these states, New York, New Jersey, Illinois, and, and California, why are they losing so much population in Texas and, and Tennessee and Florida and the Carolinas? Why are they gaining so much population? Right. And I think that's what we have to drive home. And then, frankly, the other place where we've got to be just tougher, it really hit me. I, I had a, a speech last night with about 800 people at the Republican Jewish Coalition. And as we were talking about what's going on, it occurred to me, you know, we, we, we need to say anti-Semitism is evil. Anti-Semitism led to the Holocaust. Anybody in the Congress who's anti-Semitic should be stripped of all of their committee assignments because what they're advocating is genuinely evil. It's not just bad. It's not just wrong. It's evil. They don't and have the courage to do it. To go. They're never going to do it. No, but that, but that ought to be the standard that we and the country set. And then if they want to say, no, we'd rather protect evil, let's be clear where the Democrats are at. I mean, if they want to protect evil, that's their prerogative. But I don't think they can sustain that in most of the country. I don't think. Look, the, the question then becomes this is going, going to be regardless of who the Democrats pick. This is going to be a classic choice election Two very yep. different competing visions for the future. Now, I could see people saying, well, if you guarantee me health care. Well, how to keep your doctor plan and save money work out. But you're going to guarantee me Medicare for all. You're going to guarantee education through college, starting with that daycare. You're going to guarantee me a job, guarantee me healthy food, guarantee me all of this. And when you ask these people how they're going to pay for it, they can't answer because the Medicare for all part of it would take up 90 percent of the budget in the 10 years you're going to do it. But I think I think we should campaign on having the country choose between winners and whiners. If you want to be a winner, if you want a chance at a better future, if you think you can do better than some bureaucrat controlling your life, you ought to be with us. But if you approach life whining all day, every day, if you, you think uh, going to the Soviet Union for a honeymoon and uh, really loving Joe Stalin is a, is a cool thing, you ought to be for them. So he should, he, he shouldn't run just because of the fact he looked naked in that picture. I'm like, oh, gosh, what is he doing? <laughs> what are they doing over there? All right, quick break. We'll come back more with Newt Gingrich. His new book, Collusion, out in bookstores everywhere, now bestseller. Uh, you're going to love it. Ripped from the headlines of today. Um, and we'll continue. Oh. All right, we continue with former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. His new book, Collusion, by the way, it's on Hannity.com, Amazon.com, bookstores everywhere. You know, you all this talk about Russia, you know how we would bring Putin, the hostile actor that he is, and Russia, the hostile regime, to their knees? It's called energy. Wow. Remember, you, you had yep. a campaign. Uh, what was the campaign called? Pay less. I think, I, think it's fair, no, I think it's fair to say we had a campaign. We did. Because you drove it to a, a national importance. It was drill here, drill now, pay less. Right. And Obama per- attacked me personally and said, this is terrible demagoguery because I wrote a book called Gasoline 250 a Gallon. Yeah. He said, that's impossible. You know, we have peak oil. You'll never do this. I kept saying, there's this thing called fracking. Uh, but, again, they are the party of emotional sentiment with zero knowledge. I think they literally didn't believe that it was possible to generate you know, fracking in, in North Dakota alone, jumped their proven reserves from $800 million to $24 billion. Mm-hmm. In North Dakota alone, we're now the right. dominant energy producer in the world. First time in 75 years, we're energy independent. We don't have to beg those countries that hate us for anything and a right. net exporter of energy. The, the, the challenge for me is how do we get it to Western Europe, Asia, cheaper than putin we we think we solve that problem putin is on his knees russia's done as we know it that's right and that's why we actually have a big program on liquefied natural gas doing precisely that and offering an alternative to relying on the russians but i also think we want to say the average american you want to live in a country that is the dominant energy producer in the world that creates jobs in the energy field lowers the cost of energy in the u.s it's eight times as expensive 
to use natural gas for manufacturing in Tokyo as it is in the United States. Now, you like the jobs in Ohio, and by the way, Ohioans get this. Ohio has gone from being a marginal state to being a solid Trump state because they're seeing how many jobs are coming into Ohio. These are high-paying career jobs. Truck drivers in the oil and natural gas industry are being trained starting at 80 grand, 90 grand a year, and all the overtime you can get. And if we mainstream that in this country, we will see a rising tide and literally Sean. lifting to a, people to a brand Sean. new level of wealth and happiness. Sean, do you realize what a vicious thing you're saying? I'm a horrible they person. Need, they, they, they won't need food stamps. Okay. Now, now how can they, they won't well, need public housing. They won't be on Medicaid. And they'll I take mean, vacations and buy a house and send their kids to the school they dream of. Right. Yeah, that would be cool right. for everybody, so, wouldn't it? So, so, so if you're a liberal, so think about how horrifying this is. I got to go, though. I get, you're right. We need it. All right. The book is called Collusion. Mr. Speaker, thank you. We'll see you on Hannity uh, tonight, 9 Eastern, Fox News. Uh, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get to the phones and then our news roundup information overload. We've got new data on how the trends look demographically when you break down demographics for elections uh, with the Hispanic community looking pretty good for Trump and op a lot of opportunities there. Straight ahead. When news breaks, you get the inside story that no one else has and the behind the scenes chatter that the mainstream media doesn't even know about. This is the Sean Hannity Show. All right, 25 now till the top of the hour. Right, as we've been telling you last week, Ethan, who works with us, uh, he's just a great kid. And um, he, <laughs> all right, enough with the baby noise. There is, we told everybody that there is a new addition to the Hannity Show family. And Ethan and his wife just had a beautiful baby Seven pounds, ten ounces. Yes, sir. Caleb Joseph Keller. It only took them like four days to pick the name after the kids. Oh, born. come on! It's their first. Give them, give them a little leeway. How long did it take you and your wife to pick out the kids' names? Uh, I don't remember. I just don't. But it, you know, it's an important decision. I mean, sometimes I hear names that people want want to name their kids. I'm like, oh no, that kid's going to be ridiculed for the rest We're of their life. We're just glad it's not another John or another Michael. That's just. Anyway, congratulations to everybody, and uh, when they come back, we'll... Uh, should ask Jason what he'd name his child. Yeah, what would you name your child, Jason? You don't want, you don't want kids up, right? I didn't say I don't want them. It's just that I would take... Well, I mean, How many I, years have we been together? And even when we didn't... You, God, we, you've, we known, made, you've known me since 1998. Right. But for all these years, I know you as the... Cons you're the perpetual bachelor. You're, you don't want to get right. married. Because <laughs> you had a million chances to get married. You don't want to. I wouldn't to. say a million, but there have been opportunities. And, and right. ma marriage is just marriage just seems to be like a very miserable proposition for people. Oh, boy. Well, we have a picture of the baby. Caleb Joseph Keller and mother and uh, baby are doing great, thank goodness. Um, and by the way, we got to honor Linda's not here. When is she back this week? Do we know? Anyway, so there is this thing called the Alliance for Women in Media. It's an organization for women by women. What's really cool about this is she got the Woman of the Year award. It's called a Gracie, named after Gracie Allen. This is like this is like a big deal because every radio person, it doesn't matter what position in radio you happen to have. I mean, to get number one considered for this is huge, and then her getting this honor is unbelievable. So she's out on the West Coast. Uh, with her, you know, family and friends, and uh, we're just really proud of her. I mean, we have a really good team here. I mean, it's the best, don't you think? She, the, may, she may ask for a raise, though. That that may really, be in the offering. It, it, it's, listen, shocking. But you know what? Uh, couldn't go to a nicer person, a more hardworking and advancing person. She puts her heart and soul into the show, and uh, we're very thankful. By the way, only Blair and I understand where was it where we got on the air? Like a minute before airtime. I think it was London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you remember the hotel? We had to switch rooms <laughs> from one hotel to another hotel, grab all the equipment. I mean, we had a t 
ton of equipment. Well, uh, it was Linda's hotel, too, which was kind of weird, remember? They no, that hotel was the strangest. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had plates of naked women on the walls. It was the weirdest place um, in the world, but no, there were no hotel rooms for anybody, so we're spread out all over the place, uh, obviously because of the president's visit there. And but sure enough, what was it about two minutes till airtime? We got up about 60 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah about who, 60. who was counting? <laughs> well, you got to give me credit that day. I said, look, if you don't get up, you don't get up. Everyone's trying their best. These things happen. And we you were the least panicked out of everybody. I, yeah. I kept saying to everybody, it's OK. Don't Linda worry. was stuck to the ceiling. Oh, she, I was I was crawling all over the place. Oh, you're out of your mind. James is <laughs> James with his bad hip and back is like lifting the heaviest equipment. I'm just trying to help whatever way I can. And take the pressure off everybody. Take us out for beers, and I almost thought for a second there. Yeah, I'll well, just leave I, it. I honestly said, if we can't get up and running and we can't do the show, we tried our best. We set up two separate lines in two separate hotels, and it wasn't working. No fault of ours. Um, like I said, well, I guess we're gonna go get some beer and and maybe a couple of chicken wings and and hang out for the rest of the afternoon. But you know, those are what we call memories. We learned. Oh, oh is that and, what that was? And then it wasn't in Helsinki. She was racing out in Wonder. Oh, we, yeah, we blew back. a fuse and then Linda ran <laughs> yeah. in like nine inch stilettos down to the. Yeah. <laughs> well, she loves telling that story. It's yeah. a, that story is hilarious. All right, let's get to our calls here. 800 941 Sean. Randy is in New York. The all new AM 710 WOR. How are you, sir? Glad you called. Hi, Sean. It's good to talk to you. I wanted to let you know the rest of the country is still with you. We're very happy that you're keeping track of. My God, probably three or four pages worth of problems that have been going on with the Democrat Party in that last election. I wanted to just mention, kind of hoping Donald Trump must have his reasoning for not declassifying right away. He must be timing something. Who knows what his reasons are? Well, I'll say this. I I wanted the the FISA applications out. I wanted the 302s out. I wanted the exculpatory information emails out, all the things we talk about. I wanted it out before the election. I know it. In in retrospect, though, I would say it would have been it it would have been buried. Now that the Mueller report came out, now that this the opening act or page two, the second chapter begins and Mueller's dead, I think it has that much more impact. Holding it was smart. There's a huge impact, and I think everybody from Manafort to Flynn to Papadopoulos will probably be completely vindified there's no reason that when any da prosecutes any case in this country if they have a police force and the police force uses them or gives them bad information and they use bad information to get a bad warrant from a judge everything that they've done i don't care if they've found murderers or rapists if they're damn fools enough to have used a false warrant or false information to get the information everything's thrown out and those people will walk free well, it should be. You know this case down in Florida that they uh, supposedly were taping all these customers and Robert Kraft went in for a massage. Um, uh, by the way, I've, I've known Robert Kraft. There's a, there's a behind-the-scenes story about him that nobody would ever... This guy was so in love with his wife, lost his wife, I think, of 48 years. Um, and But you can't go in, in a with a blanket, non-warrant situation... Uh, tell the store, the spa that I guess you're having an emergency. And then anybody that goes in there, you're being videotaped. Well, don't you have to have a warrant for the videotape of any individual that's in there? To me, that, that shocked me because, you know, here we go more. It's kind of, that's the abuse of power. And you got to have cause to get a warrant to spy on somebody. Now, if they want to spy on the people in the spa, that's fine. But the people that go in, I just I'm not a massage person, but other people I know swear by it. They love it. It's the greatest thing in their life. Some people love yoga. Some people love acupuncture. I don't have time for any of this stuff. You know, right now I got uh, a belt on my back so tight because I threw my back out. I'm, I'm not going to a chiropractor. I'm going to suck it up until the pain goes away. Um, so. Uh, I just think that, you know, we've got to be careful. These these warrants are critical. These are our constitutional rights here. Um, The key to uh, this democratic republic is the rule of law. And if you have justifiable cause for a warrant, you got to take it to a court and you better not lie to the court and you better not lie by omission and withhold exculpatory information or information that would change a judge's outcome. 
And that's what happened here. And they, we know, all know that they were warned about all of this. It's scary, Randy. Run rough shot right over top of them. They said no. She said no to the FBI, and they walked away. Uh, I mean, the same thing with Mueller. He absolutely ignored information on Uranium One. These guys were all thick as thieves during that Obama administration. And the treason, that truly is treason, happened. Yep. We know the results. We know how bad the uranium one deal was. So there is reason to look into this, and I hope they do. I hope when these I think there's about five special prosecutors that are needed, but I hope these guys can do their job, Sean. We all do. Yeah, me too. You know, and I I really do mean it when I say the 99 percent that are great people that serve us in the intel community in the crim and in law enforcement. I hate that that some feel tarnished by the actions of a very few. It just so happens in this case, the very few we're talking about were at the very top and had uh, all that power that that they could do a lot of damage to uh, the Constitution, the rule of law, equal justice. And it happened. And I think there's going to be a lot of fallout. It's all coming out. There's not nobody's going to be able to stop it at this point. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go to Carol is in Florida. Carol. Hi. How are you? Welcome to the program. Hi, Sean. Uh, my husband, Don, and I really love you and the Island Group, and we really appreciate what you're doing for America and Americans, and especially supporting President Trump. And I wanted to make a point today, because I don't think you're quite on board with this, but I think you need to maybe pray about it and think about it a little deeper, because the whole attitude right now is that the Democrats are clueless, they don't get it, uh, they don't want to accept the election results, and on and on, when in truth, Almost all of the leaders of that party, a lot of them are republic. I mean, are um, lawyers. So they understand the law. They understand they're not going to be able to get Trump as far as being able to impeach him. They understand that he's done nothing wrong, but they don't care because we have to know our enemy, Sean, and our enemy is they're fighting a war of propaganda, and they're trying to sway the public opinion. And we already know from one of the polls that they had a while back that 48% of the people believe that the Russians did impact our election results, even though there's never been one shred of evidence. So I think we ought to start calling them out as propagandists. We ought to stop thinking that they just dislike Trump because of the way he tweets. They, they dislike him because they're globalists and because they don't like what he's doing for America and Americans, and they're trying to stop him, Sean. So... What we need to do is learn to fight our enemy on their ground by calling them out and stop coddling them as though they're all a bunch of ideologues that are idiots. They're with their program, Sean, but we're not with ours. And that's really what I believe. I believe we ought to Let me, let me tell you something. The one thing the president's not going to allow to happen, he's not going to let people take shots at him. He's just not for no reason at all and not fight back. And I know that is, you know, I'll look at Mitt Romney, for example. Mitt Romney is a very nice, kind, gentle human being. And they turn this guy into a misogynist, a, a violent young adult who actually cut the hair of a fellow student in high school. He was a racist. I mean, listen, the media loved John McCain, too. Loved him when he was a liberal. But as soon as this guy ran for president, he was Satan. It, if Donald Trump cures cancer... If Donald Trump were to give every American five million dollars, if Donald Trump adopted their stupid new Green Deal agenda, they'd still hate him. They can't help themselves there. This is such a um, psychological downturn for people on the left. They are unhinged. They have lost it. It is a psychosis. It is rage at a level that is so irrational. But the thing is this, they are playing right into Donald Trump's hands. Donald Trump lives in the minds of every fake news media outlet in the country, lives there. They can't help but react and respond like little Alka-Seltzer tablets and water. They bubble and they fizz. They can't handle his iconoclastic nature. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Uh, a lot more of your calls. News Roundup information overload hour coming up at the top of the next hour. John McLaughlin and John Jordan have done an exhaustive study. What are Donald Trump's chances of getting 33% of the Hispanic vote in 2020? We do everything demographically when we take polls. Um, 
under this economy, it's looking really good. A lot of opportunity. I like to study research all the time. All right, as we get back to our busy phones here, Colleen is in Long Island. Colleen, hi, how are you? And uh, welcome to the program. Glad you called. Oh, hi, Sean. Thanks for taking my call. And I want to thank you for everything you do. I think the country should be very grateful for everything you're doing right now. Oh, um, thank you. I just, no, you're welcome. But I just wonder why everybody assumes that the um, Democrats and the FBI and the CIA were only spying on Trump when he was the least likely person to be to win the nominee and the least likely person to win the presidency. Why would they put all the reference into spying on him? Why weren't why doesn't anybody assume that other Republican candidates were being spied on as well? Well, we don't have evidence of that now. Do I think this happens all the time? Yeah. But, you know, think of what a third rate robbery ended up with in with uh, Nixon and Watergate. And and here you have so much. Inter- they rigged a primary against Bernie Sanders. Then they rigged an investigation. Hillary broke the law. Then they rigged, they lied to a FISA court again and again and tried to rig the general election. They wanted all that salacious information out. Then they tried to bludgeon him with the insurance policy. Ah, Mueller, two years. Four investigations cleared Trump of any collusion. Truth, it just doesn't seem to matter to these guys. Quick break. We'll come back. We'll continue. It's the Sean Hannity Show.
are between me and you.
Times Square, 42nd Street.